Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left hand corner, we have I Love XTO starting as the red Terran. Bottom left hand corner, we have PRG Sabbath starting as the blue Terran. I have not seen Sabbath in a ton of matches. We did see him in the round of 16, but between these two guys, I think I'm going to favor XTO. Part of it has to go to that he also commentates, and there's always commentary bias that happens right there, but we're starting off on Vermeer. This is best of five. Anything can happen. I'm hoping this doesn't turn out to be... I, I will admit, every time I go into a TVT, I'm a little bit nervous because there's like this balance of game in TVT, right? Where some TVT is really exciting and action-packed and other TVT goes two hours and nobody makes a move for like huge sections of 40 minutes in it. And you never know going into a TVT. So I think out of... Uh, I, will, I will confess that out of all of the... Uh, matchups. I think it is my least favorite to commentate. It's like my most favorite when it's like an intense three factory versus three factory battle in the middle of the map and it's my least favorite when it's like that and nothing happens where it's like yeah where the base is split and everybody's got everything and nobody's making moves and it's just battle cruisers wandering in and wandering back out and wandering in and wandering back out ad nauseum. It's hard to commentate those and uh Feels like it's a lot of build up towards a. It almost makes me want to go like. Uh, that's actually. I think that might explicitly be the reason why when I was. Like, how much time do I have to play StarCraft when I didn't jump back into StarCraft uh, to play Terran? Because it's like. Playing. I, and I'm going to say this. I actually feel in early stages with the two factory pushes and level two weapons, level one armor builds and things like that, I think it's actually a little bit easier at early levels to get to, I would say, I don't know, C with just following straight build orders with TVT. So actually, I'm going to say if you're just getting into StarCraft, maybe to improve your APM, maybe to learn build orders, I actually think it might be like at the very, very low level, Zerg is easiest because you just rush with Zerglings and build a ton of Zerglings and flood everybody, right? And then after that, it's like the next notch. I feel like it's a little bit easier as Terran because you have all those standard build orders. Uh, to work with. Looks like Sabbath is going to go ahead and scout in. And then after that, it's like Protoss, because Protoss, uh, you got a lot of abuse and stuff that you... Hopefully I didn't mess up my mic there. Bumped my mic a little bit. Screen deciding to black out for me. Um, XDO going for very... F Both players actually going... So they scouted... E so initial scout... In Sabbath's favor, XTO building anyway, and is this? I've never seen this. This is a proxy supply depot. Very clever on. I kind of like it to disrupt. Look at that! I have never seen that. That is amazing. So disrupts gas immensely. So clever play there by Sabbath. I think that actually might be worth it because that slows down a lot of that gas production. That is the first time I think I've ever seen that anywhere. However, Sabbath in the meantime just going ahead and building troops. Anyway, continuation with that thought. So I think Protoss beyond that seemed to sail and have an easier time all the way up to, I don't know, S rank. And then it's like at crazy S rank, Terran becomes the strongest again with Flash and... Light and whoever. Um, arguably. I think there's another period in there where it's like Zerg becomes strong again, but it's like laps over because like once a Zerg player has Mutalist Micro that's just that strong, it becomes near impossible to beat them. I don't know. Theory is about where like different scalings of skill level, you start seeing the more dominant players based on... It, it, it's all speculation anyway. I'm not even going to pretend to be an expert across the board on that because I am not at those levels, just via observation. Two factories building in the background. But I will say this. Terran overall, I think, have a disadvantage in this regard. They have to play TVT, and TVT ends up being so long. So Zer ZVZ, you get the most matches in, right? Because ZVZ, as Zerg players, the ZVZ are just so fast. So you just get more bulk games in to get more bulk things into your brain. PvP, it's kind of middling. But TVT, you've always got to play the TVTs, which means that's... Like, if you're just talking about raw volume of matches making you a better player, if in a two-hour period, a Zerg player is going to get in more matches just de, more de facto over a Terran. 
So that is my rant on why I don't... And aside from that, like... Hopping into a two-hour TVT, or knowing that a, a TVT could go two hours, it's just kind of like, oof, right? And I do think there's a certain thing where, to get better at games, like, you got to have this certain draw towards punishment, <laughs> to a certain degree. It looks like Vulture Speed being canceled, additional tank. So Double Machine Shop, third factory being placed for XTO. It looks like he's going to go for the standard Vulture play. Sabbath opting to go Siege Tanks more here in the natural expansion. But anyway, end rant there regarding theory of how players might get better. Maybe I should do a true F to S series. Or F to question mark in my regard. Series at some point. If I ever had spare time. Reality is, is uh, yeah. I'll end that rant there and actually commentate the game. Vulture Speed finishing mines up. We saw how delayed it was compared, actually. Sabbath now, after getting those initial siege tanks. going to follow it up with Vultures. He wants to make sure he can defend and just attack into XTO. XTO. And I actually think this is going to be the better play. Because having those three Siege Tanks back means that he's going to be able to repel those Vultures from his natural expansion. Where XTO doesn't have the equivalent Siege Tanks, and it looks like he's continuing to build Vultures to fight this off. Now, it is possible that XTO just bulks up enough that it doesn't matter, but I think this is going to put Sabbath in a position where effectively what he can do... Oh, he's not even going to bother with Vultures. So tacking on a third and a fourth factory, going up to Goliath. So what he wants to do is catch... Looks like he wants to hard counter XTO overbuilding Vultures and just be able to wipe that out. Now now the question becomes is, does Sabbath ever end up with enough trooping to defend his natural expansion and advance to go ahead and grab additional bases? Or if he just wants to slow play it, yeah, kind of walk up, just grab his third much, much earlier than XTO and be able to defend it. As far as a follow-up. But with the four factories, that suggests we're seeing uh, more dedication to troops here in the mid-game. It looks like XTO grabbing his own. This is getting scouted. And this is actually critical where this fourth factory is not scouted equivalently because this barracks was shoved out to the corner and is going to continue to be shoved out. Oof. A little bit of a miss micro there. Losing some marines and taking a bit of damage on that siege tank with that mine. This, how would you like to be this guy? It's like, yeah, walk out there. Walk out there. There's vultures out there someplace, but we need you to make that happen. Barracks getting taken out, which means it's going to be a while before we see a fifth factory. So I'm almost wondering if the fourth factory might have also been a play so that maybe Sabbath is thinking about going for a slower third, but he wanted to have that extra factory in place just knowing that it would burn down. Right now, he has a sizable economic lead of nine workers. Slowly pressing forward. I think you can just A move with these Goliaths. And as long as they're, these Vultures don't dive in and path attack, I think you can clear them at this stage. It looks like Siege Tank being upgraded. Right now, XTO has, even though he's down economically, he does have map position. Looks like two Vultures were able to sneak out for Sabbath. Those two Siege Tanks moving forward to go ahead and greet them. Mining up that 12 o'clock location. And actually, XTO looks like he's going to go ahead and grab his third base a little bit more rapidly, and he's already mined up the 6 o'clock location. Comsat actually finding... I'm not sure. I think that might, must have been the Vultures. I'm trying to figure out who's Comsatting here. <laughs> Having difficulty doing so. The command center is going to be somewhat delayed. I think it was Sabbath Comsatting his front, actually getting rid of those mines. He's diving forward. He's already gotten to this mid-range spoke. And I don't know that XTO has enough to fight this back now. Because he's at pure Vulture, and a lot of this... Three Siege Tanks actually splatting that attack army, forcing it to hold up short. So five Siege Tanks on the ground. It is a superior army, but Sabbath eating a huge amount of fire as he's cycling around to try to deal with the Siege Tank attack. So expending a lot of troops. Mind drag into the Siege Tanks there on the right. Sabbath gonna GG upon losing all those troops. Oof. So big flub. Yeah, just walking straight in. So XTO choosing a good pathing point, it looks like. And Sabbath just wandering and taking a bunch of fire, basically for nothing. So it looked like, yeah, Sabbath going to GG, despite being slightly economically ahead there. Realizing XTO was going to get that third base up sooner. And if he was going for a push there, it was going to get stymied because he just lost too many troops. So rough game one. We'll move on to game two, and hopefully Sabbath can uh, show us something better. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.